Audio check, one, two, tap. Audio check, one, two, tap. Is this thing on? We are on, guys. Welcome to, I know what today is, episode 26. I was gonna say another episode because it, as I was telling Rika and Mike, I usually say the episode of that day and then at the end I say the next episode. So the next day I'm already two episodes ahead. Anyways, guys, today we're going to do some troubleshooting over things we went over or, or additional explanation. So the first one is um, uh, it's a question from Matt Aquino. He's one of our students. So he asked the question about the Nogi Ezekiel. So uh, for Nogi Ezekiel, guys, there is a uh, variety of grips. Uh, personally, I like to use my whole fist just because Sometimes the blade of your hand is, is better choking me mechanism, but uh, it's, you know, it, depending how much the guy is fighting, it's easier for your wrist to sort of start to bend. So I like to use my fist because it's a lot easier for me to keep my wrist straight. So I'll leave this exact grip to you. It's very important for you to cut off at least one carotid. And just so you know, there is a variety of names for it. I, uh, at my school, I call it Usually I switch into it from a failed, failed guillotine. You can do it from the guard, you can do it from the mount. Uh, and uh, there's no Ezekiel, I call it Iron Fist. Uh, <laughs> uh, I refer to it as an Iron Fist on one of the videos we did with Fearas. I think it was the guillotine video we did a few months ago. Um, I think there's another name for it, Diesel Squeezel. I just found that out a couple months ago. Not too crazy about it. I like Iron Fist better. Sounds very intimidating. And uh, those that are good at it, sometimes Enrique and I will literally go for it at the same time. And then usually it's it's sort of like a race. Who's going to do it better? Who's going to do it more efficiently? Who's got a better body positioning and better grip? Uh, so for the order of Iron Fist. <laughs> uh, so guys, let's look at two different scenarios. One is from from the guard, and again, guys, understand that, again, sometimes you may not get the good grips, but also it's a good tool to make the guy move in a very specific way. So for example, what happens is if you do it in guard, the guy starts to posture up, which generally speaking, we don't want. But, so Enrique is like hips up in the air and he's driving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to put it on, and it's on. But if I fail, Enrique starts to posture up. So I wanna make sure, guys, the hand that's behind his head goes immediately to controlling his head. If I'm actually using it as, you know, now we start to attack with secondary attacks, okay? So it's very important you understand what his possible response is. Again, if you do this from the guard, his response is going to be, if, if it fails, it's be, and he's trying to posture up. You could sometimes force it even when he's, when he's posturing up. But, you know, at that point, it becomes a judgment call. But understand, you have to, if, if he does escape this, you have to use that hand that was behind his neck just to control his posture. So, so if, if he escapes, he weaves his hands in. So now I'm already looking for a secondary attack. <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, normally I would go to tap, but I hear his uh, joints crunching. I should have warmed up. I did. <laughs> it's going to be like the episode two running Joe for a while. Um, so that's from, uh, from the guard. Let's look at it from the mount. Um, so when I mount it, same thing. A, a lot of times, his defense again is to bring the hands up. So if that happens, guys, now I can start to isolate. Okay, so his response, um, this is really good from, from being mounted. If you got somebody that plays, you know, plays dead and, and sort of does not really engage, um, it's a good, good thing to engage even if, so you got guys elbows down, you know, I go under and even this, this is, Right now, Enrique's fist is under or, or blocking my left left hand, left fist. Uh, the problem with this now is is so it's it's gone from a choke.
from constriction to kind of mangling. So if I was going live, I would mangle him, make him move his arm. Because a lot of times the defense, it's a very simple defense, weave the, weave the arm in. He's successfully defended it, so what I'm gonna do is weave mine in, and then say hello to my little friend. <laughs> so guys, it's a uh, couple of uh, possible scenarios to use Diesel Squeeze Little No E Ezekiel, or for my personal favorite, Iron Fist. Um, if, you, uh, uh, if you have any questions on this, uh, guys, by the way, we're going to be doing some troubleshooting. I'm going to go over some questions we've received over the last uh, week or so, maybe 10 days, that I kind of remember. So after this, we're going to move on to the next kind of series that are, in, I'm trying to put a couple of related questions together. So start asking questions about other things as well. So we're hopefully we have enough time to get to those as well. Mike, what do we got? On YouTube, Patrick Wilkins says, good morning to all from Paramus. Hi, Patrick. How you doing? <laughs> good morning to all from Paramus, New Jersey. Really enjoyed the recap on your role with Enrique last night. Nice. By the way, guys, the, the thing that you, a lot of people have been asking for, which is the narrated role with Enrique, is, is, is out. It came out, I think Mikey put it up last night. Yes. So I shared it on my, Mike put it on the school page. I shared it on my personal page. And, sure it's going to be it's on youtube as well it's going to stay there for a long time so. and agu 26 fly says good morning to both from singapore hi and he asks where exactly do you put the fist um guys anytime you have the fist you want to go you want to try to go in the karate so the karate is here okay that's where you that's where you're aiming for uh the problem is as the guy starts to feel danger he may turn his head he may move his move his head he may try to get his hand and it becomes a bit of a mangling thing so i'm again there's certain things that i use as a setup uh, unless i really get heavily heavily engaged into winning that battle of uh, dueling iron fists i will generally use the mangling as a as if, if he makes it into a mangling mangling i always try to put it exactly the perfect spot and guys you have to do a lot of drills to keep finding that correct um, correct spot repeatedly uh, but if so again unless I get, we all get our like a little bit like pride in, in, uh, in, in action here <laughs> we both have it as like okay I think I have it better let me let me see if I can prevail uh, generally speaking if the guy starts to defend it properly and, and puts his hand in there and it winds up mangling the wrong spot I will use it as a segue uh, as a as a as a you know, transition into the next, into his, his defenses. So where he starts to defend, his arms usually weave in. So I, I usually will slide up if I'm mounted. But I try to place the, the, the fist on the karate. When you use a blade of the hand, um, it's actually, the, the, you still want to be on the karate, but now you kind of really have a very wide swath. So you're basically covering a whole, whole part of the neck. So you want to make, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit easier if your wrists can take it. It's a little bit easier to hit the right spot on that one. And Dave Jocelyn asked if you could show the squeeze mechanics of the choke. Uh, it depends. Uh, that's a very, very good question. It depends. Sometimes I, I have the knuckles on it and sometimes so the, the blade of the hand. So if it's the blade of the hand, it's going to go down. If it's the knuckles, it moves forward. Does that make sense? So that it, it has like a different, depends on, on the exact placement. So say for example, you know, it's usually a pretty quick connection. Once you, once you get there, it's, it is what it is. Usually like his hands go immediately in, in to defend the neck. And that's, again, that's a great, great spot to be in when you, when you mount it, the guy's hands go up. Now you can start to isolate the arms. If you got somebody that's really defensively good. Um, so if I get my knuckles just by placement, I will, Usually, just just drive it. If it's the blade, of, if it's the blade of my hand, that it's going to be downward walk motion. Hope that makes sense. And Antonio Sotillo says, "Hi, guys from Venezuela." Hi. <laughs> All right. So let's move on, guys. We had a bunch of questions about back attacks. Once you're on the guy's back, 
All right, so first one was from uh, Lukash from Czech. He said, you know, you could you could look at a lot of the videos that John has put out. What happens if the guy tucks in his chin? Tucking his chin. When the guy tucks in his chin, he's to some extent compressing, compressing his own carotids, not to the same extent that you normally would, but if he tucks his, 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 his uh, carotids, it doesn't matter. Uh, we talked about this, like I literally cringed when I saw this in a tournament where the guy, the guy did a really good job tucking his chin in and, and the guy just basically went on his nose and just started rear naked choking his nose. I thought the guy's nose was gonna expl explode. Um, you know, Gary talks about it a lot. It's like, listen, if you put your face in play to, if you're using your face to defend the choke, then you know, your face is gonna get caught in the skirmish, so to speak. Uh, but even if he does tuck in, it doesn't matter. You could still use the same finish. I'm doing it real slow, real gentle, but you could do it real hard and nasty. I'm not. I'm trying not to do that because uh, Enrique, uh, you know, it's 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 brutal. It, it, you know, like sometimes your jaw feeling feels like it's going to explode, but. The, the, the reality is I'm using my head and I'm using the, the, the grip. So you still get a constriction. Hopefully Enrique's face color reflects that. That's why I'm doing it nice and slow. But you're still getting constriction even if, even if, um, even if the guy tucks his chin in. Another question we have what happens if the guy starts hitting you in an MMA or, or self-defense scenario? So there's a couple of answers to that. Uh, if, if I'm looking, so if he, yeah, control this one. If he tries to hit you, my left hand is gonna make sure that I'm not getting hit, okay? At some point, I'm gonna look to isolate that arm. Once I isolate, then, you know, you can, you know, of course you can hit me with this one, but it's not gonna be a lot of power. All right, so again, if, if the guy is hitting you, make sure you, this is the hand that's, so as he's kind of coming out, so we're sort of, the other thing guys you can do is, if once you lock up and he starts to hit you, the, I'm using my leg to kind of keep his arm up high so he cannot hit me, so there's not a lot of power. And I tried to turn my head away, so whatever, and, I, and hide it in my arm. So even though I'm getting hit, it's not going to be necessarily with you know full blows. So anytime you could turn your head, it's he's not hitting you straight on. It's sort of at an angle, so it's yeah, it, it's going to hurt, but it's not, you know. Then you know you could also just really make this. <laughs> so. Enrique starts hitting me. I'm trying to protect. I decide to make a connection. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna squeeze like my uh, my life depended on. But guys, this also brings me to a very interesting point, especially in MMA. You see this all the time. So the guys that are hand fighting, grip fighting, you know, trying to get to this, and this is what inevitably happens, especially with the gloves. I have it, but now I'm, I'm close to connection. Take it away from me. I'm close to making it, take it away from me. Take it away from me. That was close, I almost had it. I will try to isolate that arm, but if you can't, the guy does too good a job grip fighting. At some point, rather than trying to get the perfect connection, you can take some shortcuts. I'll just make a, a very quick sort of connection palm to palm. Okay? So this short circuits his, his grip fighting defenses. All right? So if you, like, if you have limited time, you're on somebody's back, for whatever reason, maybe you lost round one and two, and the third one you might be winning, but 
you know, you got to put him away. In a, in a, in a, a grappling scenario, say you, you got on the guy's back, he's really doing a good job of hand fighting, grip fighting, and you really can't connect to, to you know, the, the, the way you'd want. Or he keeps pulling this off. At some point, I'm just going to go palm to palm. Okay? Now, I want to go make sure that my hand, my left forearm is behind his back. And I turn my head. Variety of reasons. One is if he's punching me, again, it's not going to be. And I'm trying to control his punches a little bit with this leg. Okay? Um, the other thing is, as I'm actually using my head to push him into the choke. All right? Now, guys, if you are in that situation where you're on the guy's back and you have limited time, make sure you don't wait till the last 10 seconds. Say in a grappling tournament, you're down 12-4 or whatever score, you, and you need a finish. Don't start to do this choke 10 seconds in. Usually, you know, if there's 10 seconds left, the coach is going to be screaming, just, you know, hold out, hold out. Because they know if, if he can hold out, he will win. And you're not going to put somebody that's pretty tough, you just got on their back and you sort of like decide, okay, now I'm going to switch from, from, the, from the traditional stronger grip to this grip. Uh, you're not going to have, you know, 10 seconds may not get it done. By the time you switch the grip and, and uh, you actually get him to, you know, to enough pressure where he's going to tap or pass out, it, it, it should probably take more than 10 seconds. So I'm usually a big fan. If you're going to make a move, like say if you're behind and you make a big move in, in, uh, in tournaments, or in fights, do it at least 30 seconds left. At least 30 seconds left. Now in high level matches where the guy's skills are closely matched, this is kind of a bigger bigger picture philosophy. If you, like especially black belt divisions, when you got 10 minute matches, and the guy gets a sweep or gets a guard pass, he's up two, two nothing or three nothing. All, a lot of guys will completely disengage now. They just wanna make it look like they're working and just keep you away from them. If that's the case, you need to get started working not 30 seconds in. You, uh, you have to start at least two to three minutes left because it will take you that long to tie him up in a way that might actually create an opportunity for you to put him away or score, okay? 30 seconds, one minute is not enough at that point. It's, again, two guys fairly closely matched, the other guy's now going to purely defensive mode so he does not get scored on or does not get finished. You need at a minimum, minimum, two to three minutes to, to sort of start to go and you're gonna go and start to put yourself, to some extent, you're gonna, you're gonna move, you're gonna go after him, you're gonna put yourself at risk. But that's the opportunity to get created. Otherwise, you know, at, black belt, at elite black belt level, if you're hoping that the guy's gonna make a mistake two to three minutes left, it's very, very unlikely, okay? Guys, do we have any questions on what we just went over? Yes, and so far we have over 20 students from the academy watching and counting. Nice, guys. And on YouTube, AGU26Fly as Professor, the detail of your left foot seems to be put on Enrique's hips. If, if yes, why so? To control with it, up or down. So I don't wanna, uh, a lot of times when a guy you know, sort of a Hail Mary defense uh, in cases where the guys on your back is to slide up high, where your head is same height or even higher than, than the guy on your back. There's some details on that with, on a video with Fear Ass Back Escapes. Uh, I think we did that, I don't know. We did a lot of videos. Back, back Escapes, YouTube, Fear Ass, Carl, K-A-R-E-L, and, and it's gonna be one of the videos that pops up is Back Escapes, but Usually I like to control the guy whether he slides, slides down. So usually my arms prevent him from sliding down and my legs prevent him from sliding up. Again, it's a Hail Mary escape. Hail Mary, I don't know, I'm not a football, uh, I never played foot, American football, but <laughs> Hail Mary is sort of that, uh, you know, Doug Flutie is very famous for that, like sort of, they were losing and he was like way, way, way and just threw it out and okay, we lose, if he doesn't catch it, we lose and if he catches it, we win. It's the same thing. So if, if you're on somebody's back and you really, uh, the guy has no escape, but just tries to survive long enough, he can slide up. And, and what I mean by that is, 
So Enrique is in trouble. Yeah, this this now changes things. Uh, he's still in a bad position, but now that's changed things. So this prevents him from doing that. And Tom Dodal on Facebook says, you guys are way north of awesome. The efforts and dedication are much appreciated and respected. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. Appreciate those comments. And Dave Jocelyn asked, if someone is on your back and they trap your arm, can you escape? Yes, you can. Look at the back escapes with, uh, with Fir that I did with Firas. It's one. And number two is, uh, it goes back to, uh, I forget what episode could be two. <laughs> no. Uh, we did a, an episode on uh, on uh, uh, changing direction. No, that was yeah, it was changing direction, but we we're doing back step. But you have to change directions. You, if if somebody brings their leg over, you can escape. It's just gonna be it's gonna be a lot harder because now, usually my hands, if he's not choking me, my hands have to defend his foot position because that's what keeps me in place. Uh, once the one arm is trapped, now you kind of like have one hand. So now it's 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 doing double duty basically to making sure that you are not choked. At the same time, you will need to strip one of the hooks to escape. So it becomes more difficult, but it is possible. I have done it. And if I, guys, if I can do anything, you guys can do it. You guys can do it for sure. And on Facebook, Valery Aronofsky says, "Hello, Mr. Fox." Please tell me, please tell me how to use the guillotine correctly against the passage to the legs in MMA, grappling, and jiu-jitsu. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's um, you have to cut the proper angle. That's the key. So most people, when they wrap a guillotine, they can't wait to sort of basically. Even if I don't let you pass, if I don't, if I wind up no arm in guillotine, wind up lined up with Enrique, meaning that he winds up in my guard, it will fail, because that's where he wants to be. So the question is, is this an arm and guillotine where he's defending his left carotid, carotid vein, meaning, I'm, is it this guillotine or is it this one? But. I don't want, in either case, I don't want the guy in closed guard. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make. Uh, I point you to, uh, again, the guillotine video we did with Firas. It's, it's at least 40 minutes long. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they wrap and then try to get under. Defend, come on. This will fail. will not fail. This is all. So the key um, in guillotines, guys, and, and guys, there's a lot of material on guillotines from, from me and from a lot of other people. There's, uh, it, for every guillotine expert, like if there's 10 guillotine experts, there's 10 different ways of doing guillotines. If you want to do guillotines my way, uh, start with watching the Firas video. Uh, it, it, you know, you can Google Fluid BJJ. It's it's a chapter in the book. It's a chapter in uh, or in the DVD on Jiu Jitsu. Uh, so there's a lot of materials, but you basically have to start out. First thing is with. Did we do a guillotine video in this Pinta Virus edition? Yet? Uh, 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 so it sounds like we may have to do a, a, a follow up guillotine. Uh, video. Maybe we do it uh, the next no we, no we segment, but um, one thing that is very, like, why don't we do this, guys? Why don't you guys look at some of the materials that are there, and then let's make, have, have a little bit more pinpointed questions, very specifically. But, Larry, to add, answer your question, the key, especially in nowhere arming guillotine, is you want to make sure that my body is perpendicular to his, okay? I'm looking to be perpendicular. I'm looking to be here, not not here. This, this even if he cannot get past my left, uh, past this leg, it will fail. 
This will fail. This will. Five minutes? What happens to the 10-minute warning? Kind of flew okay. by. <laughs> so I think we can go uh, uh, over the no arming guillotine in a little more detail. But guys, please check out some of the other sources so you can have more pinpointed uh, questions, more specific. And, and it's going to be, uh, we're going to talk about no arm in the guillotine. Okay? To go off your concept about uh, finishing from the back, Peter Zawadzki on Facebook asked, at what point do you give up on trying to finish from the back and switch to let's say, an arm bar? Um, that's a very good question. Um, generally speaking, once he like, if, if I have no arm guillotine, from my back. Oh, behind. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were still talking about the I'm sorry. So the question is, <laughs> the question is, at what point will I, will you stop pumping for today? Yeah, right, right, right here, roughly here. So when I'm attacking the back, I want to be pretty lined up. So as long as, long as I'm lined up with him, all right, basically uh, my chest is glued to his shoulders, um, I will continue to attack the back, even if he has the head. Once he starts to go sub the ass, this is when I'm, you gotta stop squirming because I'm trying to explain this. Don't make me choke you. <laughs> this, so you can see his shoulder is already dropping. So this is roughly, now I'm starting to think follow-ups. Okay? So it's a, it's a very subtle shift. I'm fully lined up with it. I would still, still back, still back. He already turned his head. And it, so, not only did he turn, by turning his head, it's going to be very difficult for me to choke him now. And also his body position has changed. So I'm trying to keep him in that danger long enough that allows me to time to switch into something else. So it's a very subtle change, but usually when he can turn his head to the point where I'm not controlling either karate. And I really, my arm positioning is, is such that I will not cut off one, at least one karate. When you're choking people, you do not have to constrict both karates. It's better if you do, but one is enough. Uh, if I start feeling like he just turns his body slightly, but most importantly, it's that slight turn of the head. So, yeah, this, stop for a second. <laughs> Don't make me choke you. I can turn, turn a little bit. Like, no, no, what are you doing? Yeah, right here. Right here, guys. This is it. I completely lost any possibility of a choke. So now I'm going to go into a follow-up mode. Okay? So this, I, I'm still controlling. He still has to complete his, his movement. I'm going to try to come up, come out. So it's a very subtle change. It's very important for you to feel and, 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 and sort of uh, realize that you're not controlling his carotids. You're no longer controlling his, his shoulders. And now it's, it's time to switch into a follow-up mode rather than sort of wait for him to take it all together. That's what a lot of times can happen is if he continues to go, he's going to turn. He may change directions, but he's out. He's effectively out of that specific submission. So now if you stay with it too long, he's gonna turn and now a lot of times it's in it's sometimes it happens like not a lot of times but a lot sometimes it happens where the guy just squirms enough. Guy tries to choke him, choke him and keep that position and then he just turns and now he's in your guard and you have nothing. Now you have no control. You you did not follow up because you waited too long. So I hope that answers your question. Bigu62 on YouTube says, you guys are the best part of my morning break. Thank you. And a lot to appear on Facebook. Uh, asks, when do you use that arm lock that you used with Firas, where you lift your leg uh, and use the, the choking arm to trap his arm? 
when you're on this back? If it's there. Yeah, if it's there, I, I, you feel it. Like if the guy is like this, then, then I'll take it. But if it's not there, uh, so it's, I, once, this is very, you know what, let's go back there. This is a very important point. You have to have the mentality to understand, guys, I, I call it a trigger in my book. Uh, it's, it's like a trigger is like when enough movement is, has happened where you effectively t took your attack away from you or is this close and you kind of understand that you're not going to be able to, to catch it and stay with that move. You have to realize, and those are different, you know, it's, it's so once I'm here, so I'm still controlling it, but I'm literally a split second. So V makes just, uh, yeah, that's it. Go back for a second. I can still force it. Go. This is it. I'm already thinking, where am I going with this? It's there. But a lot of times, the Greek can know, so it's not going to be there. I'm thinking like, what is he giving me that's gonna be easy, easy finish, easy follow up finish. And, and these are actually the two sequences I use, either arm triangle or that sort of straight, uh, uh, straight uh, Americana or key lock, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so those are actually sequences I use a lot. Uh, but a lot of times, there's a lot of variability in back escapes. And uh, when the guy is really good at switching directions, you have to sort of be on the ball to try to understand like, okay, as long as he stays here, this is what I have. Oh, switch to, knowing also what possibilities open up if he goes the other way. And that goes back to sort of the, how you train, how, uh, you know, who your training partners are. Uh, you know, do you drill? Uh, do you sort of flow roll? And do you then, then you need to, then you need to put it to practice and you need to go hard because that's when the techniques truly get tested. And on Instagram, Estaria says, best vivas from Costa Rica. Hi. Uh, from the AA team. Oh, nice. Plenty good man. Say hi to the guys over there. Yeah, we were, we were there uh, March 4th through 9th in, uh, in, uh, yeah, Vida Sana, Playa Hermosa. We missed that place. <laughs> yeah, we missed the sun, but it's coming, guys. Spring is here, so. Anyways, uh, guys, we're out of time. Uh, tomorrow we're doing gi. Uh, the day after we're gonna do no gi, so maybe we're gonna go over some of the um, no arming guillotine details. But please, if you know, ask your questions, but try to utilize the resources that are already out there, so you can have more more detailed questions because it's. It's only a half an hour session, and usually if I teach a guillotine, that's a three hour seminar in itself. So I wanna make sure that I, I go straight into your very specific questions, okay? Everybody good, guys? Stay well, take care of others, and we'll see you tomorrow for episode, another episode of Rolling with the Fox. <laughs>